Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Today, we have a no comparison test between two watches that are similar in style, but worlds apart in status, stature, and price. We compare the Oris, which is priced in the mid-range for a watch, to the Patek Philippe, which is priced in the mid-range for a house. It's ProPilot X versus Nautilus today. Versus starts now. Let's take a quick look at these watches. You can see integrated bracelet, base metal sports watches, one in steel, one in titanium. Let's start with the known quantity and the pop culture phenomenon. Of course, the first Patek Philippe Nautilus in 1976. Designed by Gerald Genta, it was, at the time, an ambitious pitch. A steel watch that was priced like a precious metal watch. Well, it was always something of the red-headed stepchild in the Patek Philippe collection. Something happened around 2017, and the 5711, long considered subordinate to the dress complications in the Patek catalog, suddenly became an obsession on social media, as well as at the auction house. And that leads us to where we are today. This is a one-year-only model, the 5711 1A-14. 40 millimeters in stainless steel. It's the green dial that sets this variant apart. It was, it was only made for the 2021 model year, which, as it happens, was also the last year for the 5711 in the Patek catalog. So let's take a look at what this one-year-only 400 plus thousand dollar Patek Philippe does for me on my wrist. The first thing you can see is that, well, it wears beautifully. As with all 5711s, it's nice and thin. It's 40 millimeters in diameter, but it's only 8.5 millimeters thick. And it's short enough across the wrist that you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. So yes, a lady with the budget to match could wear this timepiece. From lug to lug, the case is 44.6 millimeters across the wrist. But if you include the end links, it has a broader span across the wrist of 49.5. So just keep that in mind. It's not super short across the wrist, but down to about 13 and a half centimeters circumference you're going to get a good fit. Now, taking a quick look at the bracelet, you can really see this is where Patek pulls away from the Oris. You do get a few tricks for your money, and it's worth mentioning that though this watch is auctioned for over half a million dollars, uh, the current pre-owned price is between about four hundred and thirty and four hundred and seventy thousand. That's a far cry from the retail of thirty-four thousand eight hundred and ninety-three dollars before the watch left the catalog. All of which is to say, at its original retail price, you were getting quite a good deal for the level of hand finishing that goes into the bracelet links, that goes into the bezel, and goes into the case. Though it is a watch priced towards the bottom of the Patek Fleet price pyramid, the Nautilus in steel was the toughest watch to finish in the Patek standard collection, and actually took took more time to execute in that regard than the more elaborate complications in precious metal. Now you can see that one of the oddest features of modern Patek watches is the circa 2012 transition from screw fixed removable links to pin sleeve removable links. This is a setup that you would have found on say an Omega Speedmaster from the 90s. Why Patek went this direction with a flagship sports watch in the 2010s is beyond me, but you do get some innovations. You can see a ceramic spring-loaded pin snap, so over time the clamshell that locks the bracelet into place will not be able to wear down that pin snap, retaining the snappy feel of the clasp over time. Rolling over to the case, you can see it is very thin in profile, and I think this is a good place to compare the two watches. The Oris is relatively thin for what it is. At 12 millimeters thick, it is thinner than a Rolex Daytona, but it's no match for the Patek Philippe, which has always been one of the slimmest 120 meter water resistant, fully loomed automatic sports watches on the market. You can see the original Gerald Gent design with the winglets locked onto the case, helping to create the water resistant seal. Screw down crown, again, 120 meters water resistant. On the dial side, we get what made this variant special. So what's the difference between, say, a $125,000 Patek Philippe 5711 1A-11 with a silver dial and this dash 14? Well, the difference between that $125,000 watch and this 400 and, well, Thirty to seventy thousand dollar watch is that this one has a green dial. So some people have paid over half a million dollars for the distinction of this green dial. I'm going to leave it up to you whether it's worth the price premium over the Oris or even just over a standard 5711. One feature that is undeniable, however, is the quality. 
we have white gold hands, white gold indices, a lovely striation across that gives texture and depth to the dial. The Oris, in comparison, is rather flat. You can see it has a nice granular texture, but that's a printed dial. This does feel and look more expensive. Also, Patek Philippe was listening to us, and from 2019, it began to upgrade the Nautilus with a hacking seconds function. This is the new caliber 26330SC. So, you get the hacking seconds and you get the quick set date. Patek finally catching up to the ETA 2824s of the world, but I jest a bit. It is a fine movement and it looks the part, and this watch has an abundantly luminescent dial. Let's do a quick comparison to the Oris because this is one of the areas of advantage for the Patek Philippe. The Oris dial is attractive and this salmon dial is reasonably well loomed, but not to the degree of the Patek. There is a gray dial version of this Oris that is even worse loomed because it uses the black version of Superluminova. If you want to be able to see your Oris at night, get the salmon dial or the blue dial variants. Now, Patek, display case back actually worth showing. This is the 26 330. And as you can see, it's very similar to the previous 324. Changes in addition to the design of the reduction wheel adjacent to the rotor include the design of the terminal end of the drivetrain, and of course, we've got a different reference in hacking seconds. Functionally, though, it is identical to the old 324. Unidirectional winding, 45-hour power reserve, anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, 8 beats per second, gyromax style, free sprung balance, 6 position adjusted, guaranteed to run no worse than minus 3 plus 2 seconds per day from the factory. And yes, the finishing is commensurate to a near $35,000 retail price. But again, at upwards of $450,000, I'm going to let you be the judge. Now, the Oris is a wonderful piece because it gives you that same integrated bracelet steel sports watch look here in titanium, and it does it for a lot less money. This watch retails for $4,300 which, if you think about it, is about 1% of what you're going to pay for the Nautilus. Used, it's about $3,600, so that's worth noting. This is the way to get into the style for a whole lot less money. Throwing it on the wrist, you can see it's nicely sized. Well, the original Oris Aquis Caliber 400 was 43 and a half millimeters. We realized quickly that Oris could use its five-day, 10-year warranty movement inside smaller cases. So this one's 39 in diameter, it's 12 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, the total distance across the wrist is 47.1 millimeters. I'm gonna opine that these two watches wear identically. So if a 13 and a half centimeter circumference wrist can wear the Patek, it can also wear the Oris. And it's nice and light, being crafted entirely out of titanium. It's about hypoallergenic and lighter on the wrist than the Patek. And though it's not as thin as the Patek, with a sloped bezel and a 12 millimeter thickness, it'll still slide underneath a dress cuff. Taking a quick look at the bracelet. Oh, for shame, Patek Philippe. Oris found a way to use screw-fixed removable links in the bracelet of a watch that costs a fraction of what you'll pay for a Patek Philippe service. As you can see, uh, the bracelet is nicely designed. It's simple in its finish, as everything is satinated, but the fastening is quite complex. You can see that there's faceting in between the links. It's not just that there's a top and there's a side. There's a transitional facet between them, and you can see the same has been rendered on the inner faces of the shoulder links, so there's a lot of thought in how these links are shaped. Everything of satin finish, which I have to admit is a bit of a fingerprint magic, but then again, the watch being 100 meters water resistant, you can easily enough wash it off. The clasp also puts Patek to shame. It's a single fold, and it has a nice upscale lift lock system, so you lift and it unlocks, and you can see that this spring-loaded lever action is actually quite complex compared to the Breitling-like clamshell lock on the Patek Philippe. This particular design has been borrowed from the Oris Pilot Watch series, and I have to admit, it's both easy to use and intellectually quite attractive, as it's almost impossible to pop it open by accident. You do have to lift it. You can't compress it. You can't knock it. It's very secure. The bracelet does feature a little bit of a taper, which is something you often don't get on cheaper bracelets on more affordable watches. So the taper is pleasant, and you can see there's full integration of the link into the lug profile, so it has a very handsome look. There is a spiral knurling on the flank of the case back as well as the bezel designed to evoke the turbines of a jet engine. Oris, after all, does 
describe this as the pro-pilot. While there's nothing overtly aviation-inspired about it, there's no calculator bezel, there's no chronograph, there's no conversion table on the back. Nevertheless, this is considered to be part of their pilot's watch line. The Pro-Pilot X. The crown is wonderfully knurled. It's really easy to manipulate. It is a screw-down crown. Both watches have screw-down crowns. This one's a little bit easier to grip if your hands do happen to be wet and you have that 120 meter water resistance. You have options here, salmon dial, blue or gray. I like the salmon the most. There's a Ray Hot to give the dial a little bit of depth, but for the most part, it's just a flat printed dial with a lovely eggshell rusticated texture. And you can appreciate that the hands have been satinated to give them a matte finish like the case to resist glare. Now we do have a display case back and I'm gonna opine that the movement is just barely attractive enough to warrant a display case back, and that is what we get. Now, this is caliber 400, and there's a lot to love. It's an Oris exclusive movement that has a five-day power reserve, and its longevity in terms of engineering and preparation is the reason that this watch has a 10-year warranty and a suggested service interval of once every 10 years. Thanks to the twin barrels, we get five days of power reserve. It's adjusted to a high horology, five positions, and the watch is guaranteed to run no worse than minus three plus five seconds per day, which is actually better than COSC standards. The twin barrels ensure that you don't get the big drop off in amplitude after one, two, three days that you typically get with a long power reserve single barrel movement. And no tricks are played to make this a long power reserve. It has a modern beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour, not the 21.6 or the 18 that's sometimes used to extend the power reserve of a movement. We have a rack and pinion micrometric fine adjustment mechanism, and then we also have Etacron on top of that for fine adjustments and beat adjustments. We have a synthetic silicon escapement that operates unlubricated, helping to improve the longevity between services. And the watch is extraordinarily anti-magnetic, as the ISO 764 defines an anti-magnetic watch as one that exposed to 200 gauss will deviate by less than 30 seconds, 30 seconds or less per 24 hours. Well, this watch has been tested against 2,250 gauss and is only deviated by 10 seconds per 24 hours. So this watch, for all intents and purposes, is twice a mil gauss in terms of its resilience. There is a lot going on here. And yes, you do get a hacking seconds function and a quick set date. Okay, let's talk about advantages. First, we're going to talk about the Patek Philippe. Clearly, if you had an opportunity to buy one of these new, this would be the one. At $34,893, that was its last cataloged price, you were easily ensuring your fortune, given that back in 2021, these auctioned for over half a million dollars, and today they're still trading between $430,000 and $470,000. So you made all of your money back and then some. Even if you paid $500,000 for this watch and saw a little bit of deflation, the reality is over 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you're not going to lose a cent. Your money is safe. This is a blue chip. This is real estate in the best location. This is the 250 GTO Ferrari. In the long term, it's the one to own as an investment. It's also the one to buy new if you had the pleasure. I would also say it's thin, it's elegant, it's more graceful both on the wrist and off than the Oris. It sits so low, it feels like a dress watch. It feels and looks like an ultra thin, suitable on any wrist. It, it is the combination of the extreme water resistance, the automatic winding, and the thin profile that still amazes me as any comparably water-resistant Royal Oak is going to be an offshore, not a Royal Oak. Iconic, timeless, no planned obsolescence. The buyer of the first Nautilus back in 1976 would have recognized this as the direct descendant of his watch. And I guarantee you there will be Nautilus models in the year 2076 that still look like this. So this is enduring style, quality, and lasting appeal. I don't know if a hundred years from its debut, anyone's going to remember what this is. But again, for 1% of the price, it may not matter. I'm not going to be around in a hundred years. That's not how I buy my watch. Okay, superior case, dial, and movement finish. Objectively, everything about this Patek Philippe is better. Hand finished, low volume, craft arts, manifestly apparent quality in every detail, in the materials used, the fit, the finish. Everything is better than the Oris, and if this were truly a $34,893 watch, I would say you could pay the price premium and know in good faith you were paying for quality, not Patek Philippe marketing. What else is going on? Well, status and stature. Some people do like their watch to be a status symbol. Not me. 
But if that's you, I'm not going to complain. No one needs a luxury watch. Neither me nor you. And I'm going to say that that's a legitimate reason to buy this. You're not going to get that with the Oris. I would also say quite reasonably that this watch wins the loom battle. You saw them side by side, and this is the best loomed version of the Pro Pilot X. The gray dial with the black Luminova is much worse. This is the better loomed watch, beating every version of the Pro Pilot X. If you want to read it in the dark, this one actually triumphs. I would also say that realistically, this is a trendsetter. Almost all of the integrated bracelet sports watches that have been launched over the last three years were influenced more by the popularity of this watch than by the popularity of the Royal Oak. And I don't think that you would have this on the market if this didn't exist first. Now, the Oris, value. Do you want to buy it at 4300 with a 10-year warranty and a 10-year service interval? Heck, the retail price of this watch is justified, but used, you're going to get it for 3600 which is the best of all possible worlds, because this watch came out in 2022, which means that all of them still have most of a decade's warranty on them. You can't do any better. You have a larger movement here that better fills the case back. The caliber 400 is 30 millimeters in diameter, whereas the 26330 is only 27 millimeters in diameter. And in similarly sized watches, that means there's less of a disparity between movement size and case on this display case back. Power reserve. With a five day, 120 hour power reserve, there's no comparison between this and this. 45 is almost an embarrassment for something that originally retailed for almost 35 grand. At half a million, unforgivable. Five days of power reserve, given the 39 millimeter dimension of this watch, should be the new industry standard, not just an Oris standard. Warranty. Is it embarrassing that Patek offers a two-year warranty in a world where Oris offers a decade? Yeah, it is. Bracelet links with screws. Look at this, Patek, they're doing it on titanium. Why can't you do it on steel? The reason, cheapness. This is the way to do it. Oris keeping the faith with its collectors. What else can I say? Well, the clasp. Not only is the metal used of a thicker gauge, but the lift lock system is more secure and it sounds, feels, and probably is more expensive to manufacture. The clamshell system, again, this is Tag Heuer Breitling territory. What else can I say? Well, this is a watch that gives you three dial color options. And while there have been silver, blue, and green, and Tiffany, Patek Philippe Nautilus style options. Go ahead, try to get all those things in one place for you to take your pick. I'll wait. I'm going to consider this to give you more flexibility about what dial color you get. What else can I say? I'm going to say that if price is no object, I go with the Patek. It's a better watch. It wears better. It's got history and heritage on its side. Bracelet links aside, it is made with integrity. And inside and out, it looks, feels, and is worth the price they ask for it. It's an all-time classic, and I genuinely like its style. I don't love the baggage, and I don't like the fact that it could get your arm amputated in some parts of the world. There's no brand baggage, and you don't get cased when you wear this watch. Price being a factor, and price is a factor, both in how other people look at your watch and how you wear it. I want to wear my watch all the time. This is a watch that's durable, practical. It gives you a lot of features for the money. The cost of ownership is lower in every way, right down to the service. I don't understand how in a world where Rolex and Oris talk about 10-year service intervals, Patek can't do the same thing. I love the look of the salmon dial. It's lively, it's colorful, and if you want a colorful, lively 5711 dial, you're looking at one of the Dash 18 Tiffany teals, and those things trade for millions. Advantage Oris. I like the fact that this watch includes great value, durability, high style, a bright, cheerful dial, and none of the baggage that comes with the 5711. So while the 5711 is objectively the better watch, the Oris is the one I'm actually going to buy. So this watch or this watch for one percent the price of this watch. It's easy. The win goes to the Oris. Guys, let me know in the description below which of these two watches you would pick for your collection. Price is an object and price no object.